Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Shonen and Chill, hosted by Zenrado and Oceans. Hello, hello. And, uh, man, we actually have a lot of like, news, actual news, in the pre-show segment, as opposed to just, like, us flirting. <laughs> yeah, wow. I mean, don't worry, folks, we'll make time for the latter. <laughs> we'll fit it in, yeah. What are the news? Uh, so, first of all, fans of uh, Spy Family, the anime PV was revealed today. Looks really good. Uh, you don't see that much, and it looks kind of still, which is a little alarming. There's not a lot of motion in it, but the the art is pretty. The colors are very vibrant and good looking. Yeah, it's a joint production between Wit Studio and Cloverworks. Wit, over obviously from um, Attack on Titan fame, so I'm sure they'll do a good job with it. They're 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 a good studio when they're not busy abusing their employees but that's a different story <laughs> well i feel like you could say that about every anime studio except the bad ones oh dude wit is wit is special wit wit got lucky mappa has been catching all the heat because wit is oh god yeah hey folks at home google george wada and see what you find that might be funky uh oh Mr. god <laughs> oh yeah uh, the uh, the only studio CEO to date that I'm aware of that has the dubious honor of going on record in an interview saying, yeah, we'll whip these animators into shape until they deliver, no matter how much it takes. Oh, God. You know, as a proud thing of their company. So, um, you know, I didn't want to rain on your parade. I'm sorry. Why did I do that? Why did I start this topic? <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay uh anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> actually a good segue some of the animators that work at wit they actually have patreons that you can support which i think segues into our next news no but do we have that, oh, that we don't will have any later. patreon news uh, <laughs> oh. the next news is the rumor mill has been churning uh that we're about to see the end of red hood and Nehru. well i only care about one of those same but it but Both I, getting hit back to back. That quick. one hurts. Yeah. yeah. Like, Jump, like Jump really has not been on a roll with these series. Note that this is unofficial information. It's like a rumor and speculation, but the account that tweeted it that I saw is one that is generally correct when it comes to this stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it kind of makes sense as both of them have been underperforming generally. Um, so, so, yeah. <sighs> Well, uh, we'll talk about Red Hood for sure. Neru, sorry, 10 Neru fans. It <laughs> sorry, was, the it one guy in the comments last. that says Neru is actually good this week, every week. You know, what? you know what? I'm going to be so fucking pissed when Neru and Red Hood get canceled and in a year's time, Piss 6 is still running. Oh yeah, Piss 6 is on chapter I'm gonna 110. I'm going to be so fucking mad <laughs> if that happens. <laughs> Uh, also, did you catch the reveal of what P6 actually stands for? No, I have not even bothered to look at a single thing for this. <laughs> so, um, you know how um, in music, when you play quieter, it's called a pianissimo. Mm -hmm. um, and that is signified by a P in some scriptures. 6P is the way that kid apparently has to play. He has to play really quietly, and that is called... Piani, 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 missimo, which sounds like a JoJo cry. <laughs> it does. It which sounds is... like a stand cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because he plays quiet because his mom is in the hospital. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> God, I don't care about this fucking series. <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, remind, remember, reminded we what did we lose for piss six? Did we lose candy flurry for this? Uh, yeah, it was I candy think flurry. So, yeah. Uh, great. great. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> uh, do we have other news? More cheerful ones? Uh, yeah, so uh, a little bit more cheerful news. Our, uh, first, this is our first Patreon episode where we're going to actually do the thing. Uh, the winner is Blue Yay. Box. So for those of you just tuning in, look forward to it. You'll see it in the timestamps too. Unless I want to be coy and I just timestamp it Patreon segment so you have to click on it and give me that sweet watch time. <laughs> <laughs> it is a uh, blue box that won so we'll be talking about the first five of blue box and then on the patreon later today i will upload my little longer uh portion where i talk uh, further in depth than we did uh just about the first five 
for patrons only. So get excited, uh, people who get to see that. It'll probably end up anyone that wants to. See, it'll just it'll be in the Discord by tomorrow morning, I'm sure. But <laughs> but still, it's a very exciting thing. And uh, the get excited. The prizes for the contest should be going out pretty soon. I've just been lazy and have not wanted to look up a bookseller for one of them <laughs> because he's not local. <laughs> And so I've been not wanting uh, to try to figure out how to ship a book where he is. <laughs> a quick reminder that we're both, both incredibly professional. Yes, yes, we're very. <laughs> this is this is our job. Okay, we take it very seriously. <laughs> and my, every month I cash in my humongous shonen chill paycheck massive, that I earn through work. From this, <laughs> uh, Shueisha is trying to shut us down because we're rivaling the company in ex in views. <laughs> Soon we'll have enough money to buy back Red Hood and Phantom Seer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, like, run it yeah back. We're, we're five Patreon subs away from buying the rights to Red Hood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, God, like with something like Red Hood and Nehru, the rights cannot be that expensive, honestly. It's not like they've really achieved much so far <laughs> yeah, you got a point. which in one case is the same yeah, yeah. well it is what it is, what it is. <laughs> um <laughs> damn, I, damn I, i'm sorry I just, I just keep being sad on this show it really is sad boy yeah today. it's just it's, that's it's, my... it's the halloween episode so it's got to be a little sad <laughs> a little spooky yeah this yeah, this, is my... this is my halloween costume it's just me but sad <laughs> 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 Oh God! All right. Well, we we should probably go ahead and get into it. Uh, what were your your top mm -hmm. threes for the week? My top my top threes were uh, Undead, Unluck, Doctor Stone, and My Academia. All right, all right. Mine was more or less exactly the same. It was uh, Undead, Unluck, My Hero Academia, and then Doctor Stone. For once, for once, we don't have to include like five. Yeah, series I know. In the God, that's three. the worst. Because I. I work off the release list, like from the table of contents, when when we talk about the ones that aren't in our top three, and so I always have uh -huh. to like jump around and try to not forget which one while I'm going. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. I think luckily, like stuff like my my hero or Jujutsu Kaisen keeps us like mostly in sync. But then there are just some weeks where we're like, okay, and number five of our top three. Yep. <laughs> it's like ah, uh... <laughs> those are the those are the good episodes. Though. Uh... Yeah, those are the, the the juicy ones. Um, so what's first? So first up is actually uh, Red Hood. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this chapter has definitely made me respect this author quite a bit. I like this man's going out swinging. Yeah. See, the thing is, I really like the concept. Like yeah, the more right? I read it, I'm like, wow, this shit's awesome. So why did you spend so much time on this shit that doesn't matter? Yeah, like, uh, I, on one hand, I get that, but also, like, just the fucking ballsiness of writing this when the real-life context of it is happening is... Like, oh, you mean shit, writing dude. about how uh, the story is at the whims of external people, and that's why he's getting fucking canceled? <laughs> yeah, like, him... <laughs> Dude, the fucking phrase, um, <laughs> stories that fail to entertain will inevitably get abandoned... Normally, I wouldn't care. This shit hit hard <laughs> while I was reading that. I'm not gonna lie. Like, that's I. I don't think I've seen an author do that. It feels very deliberate. Yeah, I mean the one the one Unless... panel with the old man where he says, "What point is there to uh, a world whose sole purpose is to create tragedy that lives up to the expectation of a merciless god?" <laughs> Yeah, like the, or the full page where he's like, no happy ending, no tragic ending, just an end to everything. I'm like, oh god, okay, buddy. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh... <laughs> uh, I I feel so bad for that author because now also like weirdos online have started like targetly making fun of him for how Red Hood ended up. Oh, Jesus. Like uh, there's like entire accounts dedicated to just spamming him, and I'm just like, man. This is why authors shouldn't have social media. Yeah, really. I like, feel like as soon as you get into the public eye, like people are just ready to be shitty to you all the time. It's very frustrating. I just need. I just need. I. <laughs> this is probably terrible, but I, I think one day what I would like love to see is like someone like I don't know Hori or someone who gets like a lot of shit on Twitter just quote retweeting someone with their like IP address. 
and just leaving it at that. Like, <laughs> it'd be terrible, but also kind of funny. It would be kind of funny, but I think you'd <laughs> get in some trouble. <laughs> hey. Uh, wait, no, doxing is a crime, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> In America, though, because I'm not sure. Because the thing is, with here, like all the laws are so outdated. There's like no fucking law for anything that pertains to online-only cases, like uh, ad revenue from online uh, sources is basically untaxed here, as in it simply doesn't appear in the tax code. That's so I don't know. Amazing. Yeah. Like, every time I do my tax declaration, I just have to write a letter to my municipality where I explain what I do and swear I'm not I'm not committing fraud, <laughs> I swear. I just make funny videos. <laughs> and every year, I do not get a response, but I do also not get arrested, so something's yeah, working. Yeah, they must believe you, I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's different in every country. Like, uh, my cousin is a YouTuber in Turkey, and he had to basically, uh, he had to enlist himself as a company so that he could j legally do YouTube as like a, a job and be able to declare it properly. So, you know, it, it's fucky. It's really fucky. Um, how do we get onto this? <laughs> uh, I actually don't know. How did we get onto this? Uh, oh, no, right. I, th I think I, I, I wished that Hori would dox people. Oh, right. right. That's right. And then we started talking about crime. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I really think it's, I mean, anyone listening, if you've seen that shit, um, you know, of people harassing uh, Kawaguchi on Twitter, like, just report it, report it and block it. Like, it's, it's so gross, especially with, like, how much glee people have and people failing in their creative endeavors. It's so annoying. Yeah, and it's like, weird because, you know, like, he wasn't, to my knowledge anyway, being, like, shitty. Or like, ah, oh, yeah, my new mm -hmm. series Red Hood, the best shit ever. Fuck this other stuff. It's like, he's just a guy trying to get by. <laughs> Why are you attacking him? Because this thing that he was passionate about didn't work out. Yeah, like, I don't know. I, think, I guess the English anime community is just really passionate about being terrible. Yeah, they seem really invested in being the only shitty. Thing. Being just god-awful yeah. at all times. Yeah, I mean... You know, that's what the internet has done. It's given everyone the right to speak, but no one now has that, you know, burning fear that if they say something wrong, they're going to get the snot kicked out of them. Yeah, like, I it's, feel like it's we given everyone the right that. to speak and also taken away their filter. <laughs> yeah. Like, come to my house and tell me my creative work sucks. Let's, let's see. Let's see what happens. This is not an invitation, by the way. If you do come to my house, I will probably make you tea. I am built, I am built like a beanbag. <laughs> <laughs> don't yeah don't don't uh don't come to anybody's house <laughs> as i said if you could do come to mine i'll make you tea that's that's as far as it'll go i'm not gonna do that because i don't like tea but you know i'm literally, I'm literally drinking tea right now how, how dare awful. you awful oh let me guess you're a coffee person i uh, know i hate coffee too i'm like seven years old so I, I can only drink caffeine through soda because both tea and coffee taste bad to me Oh god! So so what? Do you only drink water and soda? Uh, I drink like fruit juice and stuff. Oh, you know. Okay, that's I I respect that. I can respect that. I drink fruit juice every Sunday. Um, again, how do we get on this? Ah, uh, because Red Hood is not that good, all things considered. <laughs> yeah, Red Hood is failing, and the most interesting part about Red Hood so far is that it is failing. And yeah, that's which kind is of the sad. problem, right? Uh, it's like the only interesting thing to talk about Red Hood is that it's getting canceled. Yeah, well, either way, uh, I have gained some respect for this author, for sure, with this move. But at this point, I mean, it's apparently ending, what, in the next three weeks, if it's ending? Uh, yeah, I think so. And, yeah, so, you know, I guess we'll just keep saying the same stuff until it ends, and then we'll say the same stuff, but a bit more empathically. And then that'll be, that'll be that. Yep, pretty much. Let we're just going to say the same thing about it every time, I feel like. Did you know it's getting cancelled? Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll move on. Yeah, did you know it's getting cancelled? <laughs> that sucks so much. Hey, remember Phantom Seer? Nah, <laughs> that's a sucky. <laughs> I remember Phantom Seer, <laughs> goddammit. Hashtag I remember. Um, do we want to move yeah, on then before we just we'll, repeat we'll ourselves just again? <laughs> Sorry, Redhead fans. Right. I just can't. I just can't. 
<laughs> yeah, like there's nothing really to analyze anymore because the moment you realize that it's getting canceled, stuff kind of just stops mattering. Yeah, and like right? anything to analyze is pretty much just, even if you try, it's just him throwing the gauntlet down and being like, okay, this is the whole backstory to my entire story. All right, bye. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's like, here's my entire uh, manuscript, but read out by my characters. In, yeah, in, in like exactly three chapters. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean. One thing that I've seen people say that I hope does come to fruition is that if this author stays in the manga industry, that his next work builds off of Red Hood, uh, kind of like how, kind of like how Akutami built off of uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Magic School and turned it into Jujutsu Kaisen. You know, I feel like that's sort of the thing you need to do nowadays with these short, somewhat unknown series. But yeah, either way. Very, very sad to see. Out of 10. Yeah, what a shame. Out of 10. Uh, all right, let's yeah. see. Next up is going to be Witch Watch. I liked it. It was cute. I thought it was cute. Yeah. I, th yeah, again, yeah. It, our Witch Watch segment is always like, was it cute or not? <laughs> but <laughs> it's what I'm here yeah, for. Yeah, right? I mean, that's what this series is. It's just, is it fucking cute? And it most definitely yeah. was. Yeah, yeah I mean, I kind of, I kind of left it feeling a bit wanting, you know, because I was like, oh, you know, this is their first date, and I'd hoped they would like sort of evolve their relationship a little more. But really, it was just sort of, hey, I like you, and hey, I think you like me too a little bit, and I've learned how to read you a little better. And it's like, well, you know, that's that's all that's all right. I kind of, I guess, I wished we would have taken a more decisive step forward. But then again, as a weekly romance series, I guess. Taking any decisive step forward is bad for business. So, yeah, I'm chilling. Yeah, fair enough. I really like uh, basically all of Moy in this chapter. Like, I thought it was so mm -hmm. cute when he was like, oh, you guys are hanging out? And then they were like, yeah. And he's like, oh, you didn't invite me. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> he feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also Mini Moy is one of the best gags oh, so yeah, far. Oh yeah, it might be the just best it's one so hard in, the, in the series so far. Yeah. yeah. It's just on his head getting, going crazy about that movie. Yeah, like when oh he, my God. he goes the movie was pretty good and then on his head he's like banging drums and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's me every Jujutsu Kaisen chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Mini Zen. Just, just on my head banging <laughs> drums. Except I'm also doing that in real life. <laughs> well, we've seen that with Moy as well. Like when he laughs genuinely, uh, he, both me, Moy, and real Moy laugh. So I guess your genuine emotion is rawness and swag. Pretty much. <laughs> That's all I've got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this chapter was super cool. Um, as I said, I kind of wish we would have gotten something more sort of forward with the relationship, but what we got was still very good. Like, I really I really just enjoy these characters hanging out and being happy together. Yeah, it's just nice to like, see them, um, like, having a good time. And I like the little the little rundown where she was like, just because he's not expressive doesn't mean that he's not a very emotional person. You know, he's having his little cute... She's thinking about all the great stuff that he does, and they're having fun at the fair and everything. And I was like, damn, this is fucking adorable. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I am, I have officially decided I'm adopting both of these. <laughs> They're mine now. <laughs> uh, that's fair. Yeah. Me, when I see a happy young person in a story, hello, are you my son? <laughs> I will protect you. I will you, protect no you No matter forever. what. <laughs> yeah. I guess when it comes to Witch Watch, my, st my taste really, re really is just... I want to see nice people be happy. Yeah, my thing is just like, and, I want to see nice people enjoy life. I want this nice couple to smooch. That's my, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, which we still have not gotten. Yeah, I was really uh, hoping for even like a tease, like an accidental, like, oops, we smooched. But no, we didn't get it. Yeah, it, the series feels weirdly like innocent in that regard as well, where it's like, for as much as we got like little sort of mentions of more bodily stuff, like especially with uh, with Wolf, who's just the biggest uh, player, 
but um you know when they talk about sort of liking people that whole topic of like physical closeness and kissing and hugging kind of is not a topic at all which i find interesting uh might also just be a consequence of you know japan being a bit more closed off in those things yeah which is and weird because it's also here. like the place that's famous for being exceptionally degenerate well yeah i mean it, I, it makes sense no like if you have incredibly repressive social norms regarding one thing that one one thing will overwhelmingly start appearing in their works and creative uh, endeavors. I guess that's true. You know, I guess like, that's true. It, yeah, like, uh, hell, Victorian England had reprodu produced the most sexual fiction out of any period or country in history to date. <laughs> so, you know, well, f people have not changed historically. We're all the same. We're all horny. And when you tell us we can't be, we'll just be somewhere else. That's just how it is. So yeah, no, it, it kind of makes sense. Uh, it is just interesting sort of how it tiptoes around that a lot of the time. Because yeah, I agree when they were like, oh yeah, we're going on a date. I thought, okay, we're going to start getting into sort of like, oh, accidentally touching someone's hand or even like, as you said, it kissed his. And that really did not exist here whatsoever. It was very much sort of an, an emotional and I guess a little, a little childish approach on what a date might be um which is fine i think for the series i think it's sort of co congruous with its tone but it's still i don't know it just inter it fascinates me in a way because shonen jump weekly shonen jump specifically has a long history of teasing sexual topics and then never having the balls to actually deal with it um you know i think my favorite example of that will always be naruto where everyone's horny all the time, but sex doesn't seem to exist. Yeah, Naruto's weird about that, where, like, every single person was, like, constantly horny, but then they, like, they didn't even kiss. Yeah, like, everyone's bleeding out of their noses bonkers horny, but when it comes to, like, actually pursuing relationships, no one's interested or uh, driven enough to do anything. And it feel it's interesting, because it kind of feels like you're trying to as an author in that situation, you're trying to appeal to sort of that young boy audience that is, you know, first starting to discover these things, but you don't want the characters to cross that line because a lot of the kids or young boys at that age would not have crossed it and would therefore sort of lose that uh, relatability aspect to it. Like, you know, would the kids still accept Naruto if he fucked <laughs> is the big question. <laughs> I wouldn't accept anybody that fucked Naruto because that dude was a fucking nerd. That is also true. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the weirdest thesis statements we have ever produced here. <laughs> it is shown and chill. Any, anyone that, yeah, our, our verdict that anyone that fucks Naruto does not deserve respect. Yeah, or uh, and the you know the inquiry question being, uh, would not would Naruto lose the respect of kids if he fucked? <laughs> would would all of his uh, put upon dweeb readers throughout his life turn on him if he fucked? <laughs> I think this is the best place to end <laughs> the segment on which watch. <laughs> oh my god. I can just Which imagine, one is it like, a fucking <laughs> repressed swath of the readership who sees Naruto, like, get with somebody and then be like, I can't read this shit. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Shaking and crying, Naruto would never kiss a girl. <laughs> He's, a He's a chat. He only kisses Sasuke. <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> yeah, how, how fucked is up is it that the only canon on-screen kiss in all of Naruto is Naruto and Sasuke? <laughs> That's hilarious. And even if you go, even if you go, go non-canon, Sasuke and Naruto kissing in that like first, um, in the, those first three chapters is thirty percent of all kisses in filler Naruto. Jesus. Because there's only two more. Yeah, there is. Um, there is Naruto and Hinata in the movie, and then there is that filler fight where Naruto is fighting the lady that kills you by kissing you. 
<laughs> where no joke in the dub she she tries to kiss him and naruto straight up calls her a slut <laughs> <laughs> my king <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, actually, you know what? I think Naruto would be a whole lot less enjoyable if he did fuck. <laughs> I'd prefer him as my... The, the as, hypothesis? As my insert. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We've just speed ran an academic paper on Naruto's sexual endeavors. <laughs> <laughs> Their validity in the public sphere. <laughs> All because we're talking about Witch Watch and how bad we want them to smooch. <laughs> okay, so I give Witch Watch this week. I give Witch Watch a definite Naruto slut shaming out of ten. <laughs> this episode is fucking off the rails. <laughs> We're what two series? Oh in? my god! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, next up is gonna be uh, the Elusive Samurai. Which was <laughs> speaking, speaking of virgins, of am I right? <laughs> <laughs> what unbelievable timing! Shit! <laughs> the guy whose superpower is being a thirty-year-old virgin. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not only his superpower though it's like canonically in the Lucy Samurai universe if you stay a virgin until 30 you gain superhuman strength <laughs> you become a lord of carnage because you're repressed <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god oh uh, so, the samurai, uh, no, not samurai, the elusive samurai was, uh, was pretty good this week. <laughs> Safe to say. It was good. Uh, it was. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of sort of, again, history and politics, sort of of the, of the fashion that I don't necessarily enjoy too much, but the, the ending portion where he, like, visits the, um, that one general is pretty cool. Like, I, I did like that. Um, I also like that when... Our main kid, he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna have to, like, avoid being captured, and it's gonna be super difficult. And he's, like, blushing know, and getting excited. I'm like, gag, I think, in the Elusive Samurai, <laughs> is how the kid gets, like, horny for being in danger. He's like, fuck, yeah, I have to run away from things? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> he's, like, got the puffs out of his mouth. He's, like, heavy breathing. Yeah, but um, I'm going to be real. Yeah, the, the thing that definitely stole the show this week on that chapter was uh, <laughs> uh, general purity over there. <laughs> the best part is it's three straight or four. It's four pages long of him giving yeah, us explanation. explaining. The worst part is, if you take it at face value, the explanation is actually not even that dumb. It's like, oh, all this passion that burns within me because I'm a horny guy, I pour into my blade and so I become stronger. And it's like, yeah, I mean, okay. You take feelings that you have to one thing and put them into something else in order to be more productive. Yeah, okay. That's uh, Freudian as hell, but I, I can jig with that. But the way he says it is so fucking I stupid. also love the picture where he's holding the sword and it's like shining mm -hmm. and he's mm -hmm. like i also have not known a woman <laughs> and he's got like the super shaded face because the sword is shining so brightly it's casting shadow on him <laughs> <laughs> okay. now this also brings up a uh another thing because of course what a series doesn't say is as important what it says. Um, so is the, the elusive samurai implying that uh, women's like position in nature is to keep men's power in check? <laughs> is that what I'm reading here? <laughs> 
to, to stop to, men from to keep becoming it. too strong. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what, you know, that's why we as a society universally shame incels because they're they're too close to achieving just complete divinity. <laughs> if they ascend... <laughs> they're just growing too too close to Nirvana, so they have to be stopped. Yeah. <laughs> when when the when the when the clock strikes midnight on your thirtieth birthday and you have still not known the touch of a woman, you will officially ascend. <laughs> No one shall stop you. <laughs> All will fear you. <laughs> uh, this shit's so funny to me. I also love the when when he says it, and all the kids are like, "Ah!" Uh, and they're, they're literally like, "Why are you telling me this?" <laughs> yeah, but then in the final page, they're like actually like really into yeah, it. Like, they think wow, he's, awesome. he's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good. I really like the elusive samurai now. <laughs> yeah, elusive samurai is, is consistently pretty decent. Like, I feel like once in a while it has like an off week where it's all just politics, and I'm like, ah, okay, I voted this month. I don't need to read this shit. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's been hitting pretty hard lately. Really good stuff. I like it a lot. Um, do you have anything else? Or no, that's all I got. It's really good, have, and I'm really excited okay. for this battle. I love the pitched battles of this stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also one thing I know this chat. It took me until this chapter. Notice we're weirdly close to like the end, or like the final conflict as they're building it up. To well, me. this is. They said it's the final conflict before his rebellion. So it's like the end of the, yeah, the exactly. intro portion. I guess, yeah, but, like, is there going to be something beyond the rebellion? Well, I imagine the rebellion the is, is going to be when he starts taking towns back. Because remember when he was like, we're going to get our military together because we're going to take our first city back from him soon. Um, oh, right, so I think right, the rebellion okay. is not just going to be like, we're going to go fight him. I think it's going to be like the actual act of retaking the country step by step. Okay, okay. Well, in that case, I'm definitely excited for it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, too. I re the Elusive Samurai is, went from something I dreaded and almost dropped, like, Neru style, to something that I really enjoy every week. As I just noticed, the thief guy out of the main group is the only one who's not impressed in the end. He's just, like, he's just gremlin-facing in the corner <laughs> in the final page. I also like how when they all are, like, shocked at him saying that his uh his mask is drawn with the dopey face just like their faces are <laughs> yeah <laughs> also the the lord of carnage panel is actually really good yeah no it's really cool like, yeah i love this guy's art style in general but uh that whole panel is really yeah. cool with all of them having like the the slashes taken out of them and stuff yeah and it's funny because if you showed someone this panel like in isolation they would never guess what he says yeah, before he becomes a Lord of Carnage. <laughs> <laughs> when a warrior of Kamakura remains pure until age 30. Why is age 30 the cutoff? What, what happens at age 30? Uh, I don't know. I guess it's just a funny... It's just a funny year to have not had sex yet. But, you know, you listen to, like, people talk about, like, aging and life, and everyone always mentions 30, and I wonder why that is. I think it's because like, 30 is, is like, it's... when you're at the point where everything's downhill. <laughs> like, you're not you're not developing any further anymore. There's nothing, like... I guess. You're just aging into into the point where your, your youth is gone, I guess. I don't know. I'm 25, not even, and I'm not going to lie... Some of that shit you just said does sound familiar. Doesn't it? So. Yeah, I mean, I'm 30 Ooh. now, and I, I feel like I feel cheated because now I'll never be a Lord of Carnage because I'm <laughs> not a virgin anymore. So, you know, I lost out on my chance oh to my be all-powerful. Holy, Holy shit, have you just dropped some SNC lore? Uh, yeah, well, they don't know that I moved there uh, right when we started the show, so they don't know the details. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we want to move on. <laughs> like... They don't know that I'm recording this from the other room in your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
from my closet. Oh no, wait, we're out of both of those, so it's fine. <laughs> and you thought there wasn't going to be any flirting this episode. <laughs> okay. All right. Next up is... What's next? Uh, we're in the top threes already. This is a short week with the, both Mashal and Jujutsu Kaisen on break. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Well, okay. In that case, let's let's go. Uh, so number three is uh, Undead Unluck. Which was Peak Shin and Ronus. It was so good. I love how he, the, the, the whole part where he was like, ha-ha, I'm going to take Undead and you can't do it. And she's like, aha, that was what I wanted, you fucking idiot. And I'm like, yes, I'm here for this. I love this kind of shit. Yeah, and I I like how because when um, Spring took Undead, I was like, oh shit, who's she gonna take then? And she pulls out Unbreakable, like the most unassuming character. I didn't even remember that they existed. Completely forgotten about them. Uh, but yeah, no, the the sort of this matchup is really cool. I'm really curious to see how the fight and actually turns out. A Beyblade fight. <laughs> Round, round two is just going to be like a Yu-Gi-Oh match. I'm here at this for point. that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> like, Fuko, we have to use the the, the dual monsters <laughs> written D O O L. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, God. But yeah, super cool. Super cool. I also I, I really like um, just the way Spring carries itself. It's definitely the the most interesting Uma so far. Uh, very sort of, you know, it's weird because he's kind of goofy, but also sort of regal and intimidating. And you can tell that he's sort of struggling with himself as well since he's, like, been forced into this transformation. Right, that he clearly um, isn't that, that invested in or wants to... He's not down with the sickness, as it were. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it's, it's cool. Like, it makes for an interesting... Uh, sort of opponent in this situation. I, I definitely really enjoy it. Um, but yeah, like just super, super cool. I love the very last. He page also does like where uh, Unbreakable has a little sign that says, "On second thought, I can't do this." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in general, it's kind of cool, like uh, having these little like linguistic gags as well. Also, I like that um, Spring multiple times does the like the Jiraiya pose, you know, with the like, you know, with the, like yeah, palms the palm towards the yeah. screen. Yeah. yeah. Yo. Um, very, very cool. But aside from that, this was mostly sort of a, a chapter to set up this fight. Like in terms of like actual substance, there isn't a whole lot aside from sort of Unbreakable being properly introduced, I guess. Yeah, but I kind of like so, their interaction because I, I think that I enjoyed hearing Fuko talk about and understand that she's grown a lot. Cause like Andy talks about it all the time and he's like, Oh yeah, you know, mm. she's awesome now. But I liked having Fuko understand how much that she's grown and then, um, kind of imparting some of that to someone else. You know, mm. I thought that mm. was cute. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like uh, Fuko is just so good now. So good. I, I really like, not just how much, like, how confident she is, but also, like, how aware she is now. Like, uh, if you, because, I mean, we've mentioned her confidence and sort of her ability quite a lot, but if you go back to, like, earlier chapters, she's also, like, really sort of unaware and unassuming early on. And obviously, you know, she doesn't know anything about this world that she's getting sucked into, pretty much. But now she's, like, so knowledgeable and so, like, in tune with what she needs to say and do to sort of advance. And I feel like it... It's so cool to see her become so competent, not just in the raw, I will fight the guy way, but also in the, I understand my position, I understand what I need to like bring to the table to get this person on my side. I, I think that's super satisfying to see. Um, so yeah, very excited to see both this first fight and whatever the next few fights are going to be. Absolutely. Undead Unlock, also cool. Yeah. Damn good series out of 10. Also very cool. Damn good series out of 10. Uh, also, weird relationship to sex out of ten. Well, but I feel like that's all this we is talked already about today. A very <laughs> exactly. This is already a very charged episode, <laughs> oh, well. and maybe not. Maybe not with this series. Yeah, that's probably not the best one for that. Uh, yeah, 
Um, what's next? Next up is going to be uh, Dr. Stone. Which was, Which was thumbs up. Shit was cool. Very Shit good. Shit was cool. That yeah. last page of the, the short cut of Senku's eye and then just the picture of Y-Man. So fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, shit's so cool. I really love just yeah. everything going on right now. Like, the whole... They shot a fucking satellite into space, bro. Two of them. Yeah. 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 It's so good. It's so good. And uh, I don't know. I just think, like, most of the chapter for me was sort of just, oh, you know, we're getting along. We're sort of moving forward. But just, but just the final spread of them locating Y-Man... That shit felt so satisfying because it feels it really feels like it was a monumental journey just getting this bit of information mm -hmm. like that pixelated image of that's the enemy. That's the first time we've actually laid eyes on him. And I think that's just so cool to do this sort of in a series like this. Yeah, it's amazing like how, long has how it has... Dr. Stone can hit like my rawness quotient while having almost no combat or anything in it. Like it's just raw science. Yeah, like just really fucking cool. And I don't know, I also think that it's amazing that these, these sort of plot revelations or plot steps that have been in the making for, I don't know how many years at this point, uh, really do just live up to it, not through like anything super complicated, but by just being incredibly cathartic. Like there's nothing incredibly mind-blowing about them finding Y-Man, but just the fact that they found him after like, actual years of him or, or of it being this unknowable entity feels huge without any huge fanfare that is necessary. Just the double spread and Senku going, yes, there you are. Like, holy shit, that's so cool. So cool. I'm still stressed. Like, I, I, I am under the assumption that they will somehow finish this rocket that can bring them home. But I'm mm -hmm. still stressed about it. <laughs> like, I don't want to lose anybody. Yeah, I don't know. It's starting to feel like we might lose someone. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of getting to that tone because, on one hand, Doctor Stone is obviously a shonen manga, so it's not gonna be like crazy brutal, standard wise. Um, but at the same time, this is a huge thing, you know, going to the moon, literally the most hostile environment a human body can be put into aside i guess from the sun um it just feels like dr stone is gonna have to pull the trigger on someone especially how much this chapter sort of emphasize emphasize the difficulty of making you know a reliable return rocket so i don't know man i i'd better be i'd better start digging some graves yeah, it's uh, in your mind. It's just stressing me out. It's stressing me out, man. Got got Doctor Stone on your I mind. Do I don't want anyone day to die? Night. Also, I love one of my. This episode has a giant panel of my favorite thing in Doctor Stone ever, and it's uh, the the uh, like convenient censorship of Kohaku's dress. Oh wait, where is it? Page uh, page seventeen. Seventeen. Let me see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just the exactly in the right angle. It's always so funny to me. Yeah. I think I, I think it was Caleb, uh, the translator, who once pointed it out, that Boichi loves to put, like, women's asses front and center. And one time it really created a... In one of the chapters where they were dealing with, like, uh, the scent factory, it was like you had Koaku's massive ass in one panel and right next to it, like, an icon of, like, a poop emoji. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Boichi, why? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, you know, you can't. You can't. Uh, you can't hate on him. He he does what he loves. Yeah, the man. The man's does obviously it a into lot. it. I also really like that while yeah. Kohaku is staring in this thing looking for Y Man, she's like ravenously eating meat on a bone. Yeah, that's like also a cool to keep her man. Up. It's so funny to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, this is super cool. Love also sort of the way the the moon photograph is. I don't know if it's drawn or if it's sort of just edited to look like that, and if it's a real photograph. But either way, I love the way it looks. Just the right amount, sort of of grain and glitchiness. 
just cool. Just super cool. Yeah, all of the images through um, their like makeshift TV that have that funky look to them look awesome. Even when they're like mapping the mm -hmm. earth, it still kind of has that funky filter on it. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I love the just the full double space double page where you just see the uh, satellite <coughs> over the moon, like with all the solar panels. Mm -hmm. Like it almost, it feels almost out of place with how advanced it looks, and at the same time, it's like a thing that they achieved. Just super cool. Really, really, really love that. Um, also the new world map is pretty interesting. Yeah, how like major landmarks have shifted and changed and stuff. They say that, but honestly, not that much has changed. Just there's more holes in continents now. Yeah, I think like South America has drifted off a bit. It's like tilted to the side now. Yeah. Also, I, when I first looked at this, I was like, oh, wow, a lot has changed. Like, all the continents are arranged differently. And I was like, no, wait, dumbass. This is just the way Japan would draw a map with themselves in the center. Yeah. It's, like, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just the way it's done. It just took me for, for a spin for a second because I'm so used to seeing the uh, Eurocentric map. Yeah, like, I think yeah, South actually, America has uh, tilted a little. Uh, the bottom of Africa is, like, dissolving into the sea mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's a bunch of like lakes and and rivers like china ha but used to be plains is now a bunch of inland rivers which is pretty cool yeah yeah and there's like a couple of massive holes around oof, like russia like two big mm -hmm. holes there europe looks pretty much unchanged italy even still has the boot from what i can see yeah so. it does still have the the little boot but you don't really see much of europe it's mostly covered up by panel yeah, true, true. It's uh, Actually, no, I can see that Switzerland is still the same. <laughs> we move. Nothing ever changes in this fucking country. I also love that uh, in Australia, because people, I guess, were gone, the coral reefs started to recover and they got so big that they added a lot of landmass to Australia. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Love that. Love that. Corals? Like, definitely top 100... Uh, Life forms. All right. I, I don't have a strong opinion on coral, but I just like the idea that the landmass is getting bigger. Hey, corals are cool as fuck. It's like, hey, it's like, hey, I'm a little pollen. I will attach to a rock and just build a giant skeleton around me that also has poison. Like, come on. That's that's some cool shit. All right. All that's right. Metal. I'll let you have it. All right. Thank You're you. Welcome. I appreciate You're it, welcome. my man. <laughs> I'll bring you a tea later in your uh, <laughs> recording closet. Oh, God. Okay. So let's... Let, let's, let's move on. Move on to, to the final uh, attraction of the week. Well, actually, no, but the final one in the listing for the week. Uh, yeah. My Hero Academia. <laughs> so, this is a... Cha the chapter is literally called The United States of America. And the final panel is them sending ICBMs. Yeah. Hori. <laughs> Hori. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> no, this chapter is so cool. Uh, this is easy. this is starting to become one of my favorite fights in My Hero so far. It is so cool. It is just ridiculous and kind of nonsense, but also just rawness as fuck. I love the, like, the little you dig at Endeavor, me? where she's like, yeah, if this was enough, Endeavor could have done it, but it's not, so I gotta do it. Yeah, but also, I'm sorry, the fucking Hell Spear being an Endeavor-level attack? Yeah, nah, this lady's lying. Yeah. Like, this Endeavor could not do yeah, this. Yeah, I don't see how Endeavor could have done this. Like, not without dying at the same time. Yeah, that's like... Endeavor's final attack, but for Stars and Stripes, it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's just her, like, so, like casually doing it. Yeah, but oh my god, dude, the fucking stand? Yeah, like, that was yes. cool. But, uh, although, like, god, she's so fucking broken. <laughs> yeah, she is. But honestly, I don't even mind it, because, uh, well, A, we kind of get the explanation this chapter, that her quirk is an exception among quirks I'm, she's an exception among the exceptional which is fine and i also i'm ready to accept that uh japan's quirk population is relatively weak because of you know that what 70 year period where all for one was just killing 
strong quirk users so that no one could inherit one for all properly since that is canon fact so you know I i'm okay with that i'm not i'm not super miffed at it i'm generally not a big uh power level guy so honestly i'm just chilling i'm just chilling with this lady i don't, She's I don't mind so cool. like power level stuff as much as it's just like the the number two hero in japan is just like a a flying boy it's just like fuck. Well, well, she, you know, she can also fly. The, the number three do, hero like, in Japan is just like a bunny woman, who j I think all she does is just like punch good. The the number five hero in Japan just has immaculate style. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest power of all. Drip. Drip. <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, but I feel like that kind of sets uh, um, Stars and Stripes up to not last. And I think the I honestly, the only way I can see it happening is if she deletes her quirk, using her quirk, where she's like, uh, I will lose my power or whatever, once she realizes that uh, Shigaraki is probably going to win. Because you can't really kill her off this quickly, because that would feel super cheap and also... I don't know if Hori would want to kill off his buff waifu. The only um, thing that that I don't like about that is couldn't Aerie just rewind her? Ah, but you see, we have shot Aerie in the head <laughs> when you weren't looking. <laughs> this is, you know, it's a, it's a bit of an uh, unknown plot point that Hori will surely introduce soon. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see, they were having they were having a meeting with um, you know a gun safety man at UA, and he accidentally went off because you know his head is a gun. That's his quirk, and it just, you know just killed Ari. And they're like, oh, dad, that sucks. And we're gonna see that soon, I'm sure. Um, I'm I'm confident. Like Hori's actually texted me. Um, I don't know why his location says uh, Minnesota, US, but I'm uh, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat it. But uh, you know that that's. That's how that's gonna work. Just trust the plan, man. Just trust the plan. <laughs> no, but for real. Eri, I'm just gonna pretend she doesn't exist for any of my sort of theories for my hero because she can invalidate all of them. At that point, it doesn't feel fair anymore. Cause, uh, yeah, I mean, can't Eri just touch Shigaraki and rewind him to before he was, like, before? Before he got all for yeah, one. Yeah, but I imagine he would just kill her <laughs> if he tried to do if she tried to do that. No, Shigaraki's an ooh baby. He wouldn't kill people. <laughs> Have you not? <laughs> He'd be like, oh, I can't yeah. hurt this child. I'm just gonna let her do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, oh, oop, uh, you got me. I guess. Well, <laughs> sucks for me. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> rip me. Yeah, rip me, King. Yeah, no, but because the, because the thing is obviously. Um, it's weird. This chapter has like two pages dedicated to like discussing the limits of New Order, and I still don't get it. Like, yeah, it still makes it no still sense seems to me at all. Really powerful. <laughs> yeah, but I do like that um, because a lot of it is just Shigaraki's conjecture. Like he doesn't know anything for sure, and I do like that. I like how he's having to sort of detective his way uh, towards understanding a quirk, and I like how horny he gets for her quirk. It really feels like this is still Shigaraki, but like uh, all for one's personality trait are like only slightly merging with him and so I'm somewhat influencing him like I don't mind this Shigaraki the one that he currently is mm -hmm. it still feels kind of playful like him without just being all for one um I hope it stays that way because you know for as much talk as there was last week where like or last chapter where it was like oh Shigaraki's awakening dudes it's happening he doesn't seem to have awakened really he just has grown hair and he's getting closer so I guess we're going to still have to see for like the next couple of chapters if it actually ends up happening. Do you think uh, um, that this fight is just going to be like an excuse to make to extend the timer? Like, oop, Shigaraki's got to heal again. I don't know. Because, okay, if we're going to talk about the timer, we probably also have to talk about the whole thing with like, oh, is the series ending or not? Because um, this series cannot end. I am like... Never, I've never been so confident in saying that all this shit about the final act is either only referring to like part one of my hero or is straight up a lie. 
because Shigaraki is definitely going to survive multiple nuclear missiles to the head. Deku can swing around the streets like Spider-Man on a good day. They're not beating him the way he is now. So I think, yes, a timer will probably be extended either through Shigaraki's injuries or through something else, or Shigaraki is going to embarrass uh, the U.S., beat them back and then we do some other stuff and then we get sort of a pseudo ending for the moment and then we get another series later down the line because it just doesn't feel realistic for you know Deku who was sitting there struggling against 30 teenagers to go toe to toe with this absolute monster of a creature at this point like Deku is sleeping in UA licking his wounds from like a month of trekking across Japan meanwhile Shigaraki is fighting a giant stand woman in the stratosphere while taking nukes to the head like it just doesn't line up i really think we are not in for the ending yet it just doesn't make sense to me and it's probably copium but still this man's eating nukes yeah i don't know Deku how they're gonna not handle this shit with the nukes like is he really just gonna tank them he's got to absorb them and then get like nuclear abilities whatever he does and then they have to they're, they're they're shooting multiple like nukes those are not just like one yeah yeah there's like a whole armada so he's gonna absorb them and he's gonna become like radioactively unstable and he's gonna uh there's gonna be a threat of nuclear meltdown within his body and then the people have to kill him before that happens and that will be our new timer <laughs> jot it down folks <laughs> Shigaraki is the nuke himself. Also, is the United States president like an octopus man? No, I don't even know if that's the president. I think that's the commander. And also, he's um, Commander Akbar from Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, I was about to say, he looks you know, like the, Admiral Akbar. Guy. He looks like Octodad. Well, yeah, they also call him. He, his name is Commander Akbar. Oh, Jesus. Okay, Akbar. so they're just straight up like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, send, send word to Commander Akbar. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, also, like, I wonder if um, Stars and Stripes is going to interact at all with sort of the idea of um, government control of quirks. Because we hear that, you know, she was taken in by the government and her quirk was sort of kept a secret. And, like, she isn't that... She isn't all that young. She's, like, in her um, mid-20s, late-20s. So she must have been, like, taken by the government at a very young age. And I wonder how that will, like... Like interact with um, you know, uh, Hawks and Lady Nagant, since obviously they would be able to relate. Let's not pretend Lady Nagant's gonna be back in the story again. <sighs> Look, it's all gonna be fine because after Eri gets shot, <laughs> they're like, oh, we need another like, we need another girl in the story or like slightly in the story. Who do we take? Who isn't dead and or uh, disfigured? Uh, Nagant. You come. Nagant's and then they disfigured. Bring her fucking on. head blew up. <sighs> the plaster over is fine. <laughs> it's just the shown last in manga. Act that's... that Aerie does before she's killed is, is rewind Nagant back to her, <laughs> her, her old self. <laughs> As Aerie's dying, she's just like, no, wait, why can't I just revert myself back to life? But she can't do it because, you know, she's dead. <laughs> Why can't I just <laughs> rewind myself so I'm not dead? And the gun accidentally misfires a second time right when she says that. They're like, oh, I don't know what happened. Uh, I, I need a gun safety man to be a canonical pro hero, though, now. <laughs> like, he just, you know, preaches gun control, but also his head is a giant gun <laughs> that goes off at unpredictable <laughs> intervals, and that's why he preaches safety. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> that would be Hori's second best character today. The best, of course, being Dr. Mario and Dr. Yoshi. <laughs> uh, I think that his best character is the uh, is the the one intern from the shitty hospital that ended up letting Night Eye die, <laughs> while everyone else got to go to the good hospital. <laughs> Everyone got to go to the Super Mario Brothers hospital while Night Eye had to go had to rush to the Sonic hospital. And well <laughs> that's how it happens when you go fast. <laughs> oh 
god <laughs> yo no 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 it's it, honestly though speaking of good characters i'm really liking um stars and stripes like i know that she comes with a whole bunch of like strings attached regarding her present presence in the story but for what it's worth she is so fucking raw and so cool also she is so buff that flashback panel where she is like in normal civilian clothes that is straight up the buffest person that uh, Hori has ever drawn. Like, yeah, Jesus. She's, uh, she's ripped. Yeah. 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 <laughs> also, I like how her stand is just called Fist Bump to the Earth. Yeah, I like how that's like her, like, her idea is like, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just uh, punch the planet. Yeah. And yeah. it'll work. <laughs> Also, I like that she calls all of her got her um, uh, pilot friends. She calls them bros. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Let's do it, bros. I guess, I guess that's yeah. I guess that's Hori's uh, interpretation of American slang. He's not wrong. Bros, bros, give me a taste of those lasers. <laughs> um, also, something that um, we obviously could not notice because we don't. We only read in English, but apparently. In the original Japanese text, she says Shigaraki's name the English way, as in she calls him Tomura Shigaraki, not Shigaraki Tomura. Oh, that's cool. Uh, which is cool. Yeah, because she's American. Yeah, that's like a neat little thing. Yeah, yeah that's that kind of stuff that of doesn't course. translate in when you're reading it in English, you know? Yeah, but I feel like it kind of doesn't have to translate because it's something so specific to Japanese. Uh, like, you can't really translate that well. Um, unless... Because the thing is, if you go for the traditional Japanese naming conventions in your translation, eventually things start getting muddled. Not for like, you know, the passionate readers such as us who, you know, dig into this stuff, but people who are like casually into it, they'll kind of start getting confused as to why so many people share the same name when that's their quote unquote first name. Um, and so you either leave it like that and cause that confusion, or you have her say, are you that Shigaraki fella? And that, that I mean, Shigaraki. that's not very. <laughs> yeah, are you that goddamn Shigaraki? <laughs> what in tarnation are you up to? Written out so it's pronounced incorrectly. Yeah, yeah. Shigaraki. 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 <laughs> Daggum old Shigaraki, messing up all and everything I don't know. She has like a like. Oh my god, she is gonna have like just the worst Texan accent in the English dub, I, isn't I hope she? That she just sounds like Hank Hill. <laughs> no she like you know she's this uh, like big muscle waifu but whenever she opens her mouth it's just a uh, peter griffin voice coming out <laughs> well I don't know. I feel like I would yeah. die if, if she flew in on those planes and Shigaraki was like, what are you doing here? And she was like, I sell justice and justice accessories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that, that would be kind of great. But <laughs> it, it, spe speaking from experience, the English whenever there is English in the Japanese version of the anime, the dub tends to try to turn it just into one of the funny english accents yeah in this I, case I'm we'll sure probably be texting anything about uh kuroko's basketball at all but uh there's one character who's like supposed to be he's japanese but he's from america mm -hmm. and so whenever he's like they'll he doesn't sound like this all the time which is weird because a lot of time he just sounds normal but every now and again they'll make him talk with like american slang like, in the way that he speaks. Uh -huh. So he'll randomly just be having a conversation, and then someone will piss him off, and he'll be like, you want to get a little one-on-one -on -one with me, pretty boy? And I'm like, you got to turn that shit off. <laughs> you got to stop. <laughs> I don't want to hear a man say that. Well, well hey, <laughs> do, you want, do you want a one-on-one -on -one with me, pretty boy? <laughs> oh, God. I don't see anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of episode we're uh, recording today. <laughs> I told, hey, it's that Halloween spirit, you know. I don't know if it's a thing in other countries, but here in Switzerland, whenever you are cranky or act weird, 
someone will ask you if, uh, oh, did you see the full moon last night? So that's what's happening with us. We're seeing the Halloween moon. Well, my windows are closed, so I'm not seeing jack the shit. Sun is it's out. the spirit that counts. <laughs> For me. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're in the wrong time zone. Uh, my condolences. I mean, no, it's not because um, we're in the same building. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's true. <laughs> Oh, no, actually, of course, you meant me, because I'm out, and I'm your... Oh, thank you. That's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> is is all of this just because Blue Box is what we're talking about at the end? Yeah, probably. <laughs> it definitely, it definitely uh, put one of us into that headspace. <laughs> um, but... About my hero still, um, I also like how, like, Stars and Stripes mostly looks like just, you know, your muscle waifu. And then randomly she has these panels where she looks super intense. She's like, we will make him dead. And it's like, oh, is this what what Hori sees the Americas as? Because, I mean, Ain't not wrong. wrong. Yeah. yeah. I, also, I, I really like the picture of All Might holding her. I also thought that was super cute. Yeah, that's super nice. I also like you can faintly make out a David Shield in that picture, which is All Might's American sidekick from the first movie. I didn't watch it. I'm not gonna watch it. It's, it's that's okay. Um, her his daughter is the person that made the full gauntlets that Deku wore while he was um, Batman Deku out and yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And um, she's also the person that built Endeavor's new costume that he has had since Pro Hero. So you know. It all comes together. Everything's canon, even the terrible second movie. But we will not talk about that. Um, we will just move on. <laughs> Leave from that. that to your video. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I will. Um, do we have anything else on my hero right now, or is that sort of the I, uh, the conclusion? I think I'm. I think I'm good on my hero for right now. Yeah, I think you know. I'm glad. Um, that we that this sort of stratosphere fight wasn't just a one-off, like one chapter affair. I'm glad it's actually giving, being given some crazy treatment. God, if you, and if I did you see did someone that, say, how would you even begin to explain that quirk? Yeah, yeah. but also like, um, I saw someone say something interesting where it's like, this is only the first fight of what Hori officially calls the final arc. What the fuck is the final battle gonna look like? Because this is like a character that was introduced, you know, barely a month ago, fighting the main guy, and they're taking up like oceans and stratosphere levels. Like, what the fuck kind of scale are we talking for the final battle? Yeah, is, that's a good point too. Just... Yeah, but honestly, I don't even think of it in like negative terms. I, if Deku is gonna punch Shigaraki across the earth, and have him fly once across the earth and then catch him Toriko style. I do not care about power scaling. That shit's raw. Let Deku copy Toriko. That's the agenda if, for if today. If Deku punches Shigaraki around the entire planet and then catches him behind his back, uh, My Hero Academia is an 11 out of 10. Yeah, like, uh, just end it there. We don't even need the conclusion to the fight. That's it. <laughs> That's just the last panel. <laughs> Well, no, obviously the last panel will be Eri reviving herself back to life and then touching the page, thus reviving all of my hero back to chapter one. And that's the ending. It's a wrap. <laughs> it just ends with Eri just rewinding the whole series. And she's like, this sucked. <laughs> do it again, motherfucker. Do it again, but better. <laughs> she's like, do it again. Do it, do it again, you asshole. And she's holding gun safety man's head to hurry. <laughs> She's got it by the throat. <laughs> She's threatening both of them. <laughs> you know what? You know what? This is ridiculous, but I definitely prefer our version of Eri over the actual version we got. <laughs> oh, poor Eri. Uh, but, okay. My Hero was very good out of 10 this week for me. Yes. And, quality, uh, quality manga out of 10. Yeah, but I think now it's time we talk about real fiction. Peak fiction, as it were. We, uh, so we're th yeah. welcome to the Patreon reader segment, where we are going to talk uh -huh. about the first five of Blue Box. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, just right off the bat, 
we're probably going to make Blue Box a weekly series here in Shonen Show from next week onwards, because this shit good. This shit be hitting. I'm not going to lie. Like, uh, I'm always very uh, sort of... Um, how do I put this? I'm, I'm usually not very into sports series at all. Because I've done enough sports in my life. I don't need to read about it. But this... This is good. Sports as a framing device. We just have these two nice people get closer and closer to smooching. Yes, sir. Definitely up my alley. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like Witch Wash without the silliness. It's just, it's just more like... I need these two to smooch, like, right now. <laughs> I need these two happy people mm -hmm. to smooch. Yeah. Like, it's... It's so good. Like, I really enjoyed my time with it. I was surprised. Like, um... It's hard to write endearing romance in a way that makes both characters feel like thinking beings. Because a lot of romances, I find, personally, that uh, they need to dumb someone down to, like, ridiculous levels. Someone just has to be socially awkward to a point of, you know, how do you even function on a day-to-day -day basis? Or someone has to be so oblivious and dumb to the world around them that, uh, you know, how do you remember to breathe? But here it's nice that both characters just feel like smart, intelligent young people kind of dealing with the world in their own way. Like, I like how considerate... Uh, the main guy is about everything, how he tries to, like, you know, play out these scenarios in his head and then, you know, just kind of tries to pick the, the option that is sort of a compromise between what he wants and what might be a risk. I, I think that feels sort of very... I don't want to say realistic, because obviously realism isn't a good measure of quality, but it definitely feels very believable and convincing to me. Um, also, like, I read up to chapter 5, and, like, his whole little speech at the end where it's like, uh, I shouldn't look at her as something that I can fight for and win. And I shouldn't just see everything she does as something that needs to relate to my feelings to her. I was like, yes! Yeah. My god! Very, like, this is a very, like, a good. lot of their interaction is very mature that way. In that, like, they don't necessarily, as the series goes on especially, but even in the first five, he kind of touches on it, where he, uh, he needs to, like, view her as a, a competitor and an equal and, like, someone who's out fighting for her dreams, not someone who's just there to, like, live her life through the lens, like, the lens of his viewpoint on her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, and that's the thing, right? Like, that's a message that so many romance series, in my experience, just miss out on. They don't consider it because, obviously, it is much easier and much more sort of efficient to write in a ro romance narrative based around, you know, the prize that you have to pursue. And for a series to this early on even, turn that around and say, well, no, isn't that kind of a shitty way of looking at this person? That's super cool. Like, it really won me over, especially on that last page. But even before that, I really like just, again, how reasonable, how sort of emotionally intelligent and um, just generally capable everyone in the story is. Like, not everything works out immediately, but it's more due to sort of, you know, the feelings, the um, the floweriness of early teen love that makes things complicated. But beyond that, everyone's just like a good and normal person. I really, really enjoyed that. I am definitely keeping up with this. And first of all, catching up with this. Um, so, yeah, obviously you've been reading this for a while now since release, right? Yeah, I've, uh, I've read it every week since it came out. Um, huge fan. I All think right. it's really great. Uh, if you're looking for a sports series, this is probably not for you. It's very loosely touched on. The sports is more of just the backdrop, like the the setting mm -hmm. that kind of defines the two of them. The the 99% um, the of it is, is about the romance, um, which I think is great. I, it, the romance is really well done. It stays really well done kind of the whole time. Like, there's never a point where I'm like, this is weird and dumb. Um, it's always very well done. And you have a lot of, like, these really sweet, moments where because you kind of touched on like yeah stuff isn't you know they're not like working out like right away but that's just because of the way that f like feelings and you know teen romance is is not something where they're ever going to be bold enough to just be like hey you want to go on a date sometime you know like these are mm -hmm. high school kids so it's never going to be like that but um they kind of it, it's played in a way that it's like yeah they both have these feelings but they know that it's not necessarily the right time 
or the best time. And like, she's here, you know, living her life, trying to accomplish this goal of hers. And there are points in the story where he almost starts feeling like trying to put something else on her during that would be almost like disrespectful or like rude. Mm -hmm. And I just like, like Mm -hmm. he's very aware for a romance series protagonist, you know, because they're almost usually played off that they're either like completely oblivious, like Moy almost, it seems Mm -hmm. to be sometimes or like, uh, they just don't give a shit. Like they're just desperately after this girl who doesn't seem to want to give them the time. Day. And I really like this one where like, they're both kind of like, funny with the idea. Like, both seem to have thoughts about his viewpoint way more than hers, but it's pretty apparent mm-hmm. that she's not just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it feels like you said, people just think it necessarily a measure of quality, but it's nice to see something that's relatable on a front like this, you know? Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of romance also have like, they keep these, exaggerated reactions to things that need to complicate the plot like you know a guy starts the smallest advance towards a girl and she immediately like comes up or a girl starts showing interest and he becomes a fucking idiot and i like how in this you know both sort of topics are breached like um the girl does react negatively to some things he does but it's never to a point where it's like these are just caricatures like um when he tries to be cute and nice to her she doesn't just like go, ugh, whatever, loser, as you said. She's like, oh, that, that's sweet of you. And sort of um, doesn't just immediately shoot it down. And when uh, he's, he accidentally offends her, she isn't like offended beyond, uh, beyond understanding. She, you know, she avoids him. And then when they do get a moment to talk, he like breaches it and talks about it. And she's like, oh, I see. I mean, I still felt weird about it, but it's nice. that it isn't the way I thought it is. And thank you for telling me. And it's like, wow, wow. Healthy, healthy communication in a popular fictional product. What the fuck? Yeah. In a, that especially in like a romance product aimed at like teens. Cause it, it's mm-hmm. never portrayed in like, at least it, in my opinion, in a particularly healthy way. A lot of the times it's it mm-hmm. usually is like either you got to get the girl, like the, you know, the guy's got to win and and be victorious to Mm -hmm. get the girl or whatever or you know it's crazy over the top characters of how humans interact and it's very refreshing to see two people just kind of like being respectful (laughs) to one another it's such a weird baseline to be like oh man this is really good because it accomplishes the bare minimum of human respect but uh i really like it for that yeah because i think you know a lot of um fictional accounts of romance tend to try to go for that uh, devil-may-care fantasy, right? Where you are under some extreme circumstance that gives you an excuse to go after the person you like without having to worry too much about consequences or about social norms. It often creates this sort of, yeah, this almost escapist fantasy. But I feel like that, that, that can hit when you're younger, when you're trying to find sort of, you know, Somebody reassures you that, oh, wouldn't it be cool if that were possible? But as you grow older, I think you gain sort of an appreciation for things that don't do that. And this is a great example of that, a series that goes, almost goes out of its way to avoid giving the main character a clear excuse to go after his, uh, after his uh, interest, the only exception being, you know, them living together. And even that is portrayed as being more so a circumstance that is foreshadowed pretty early on in the story rather than just, you know, a contrived plot element. Like we hear what on page five or so that their parents know each other or something like that. And that they have a lot in common. And then, you know, in chapter two or three, whichever it is, they're like, yeah, so she's uh, moving in with us because she has nowhere to stay. And I know their parents and we should help her. Like it feels Like, it doesn't want to make things too easy on anyone, including the reader. And I like that. I like that it's sort of taking me seriously as well as a, you know, intelligent adult. It's like not, oh, here are all of these crazy circumstances that will make it that these two need to get together. It's more like, hey, that's cool. These are the things they care about and they kind of like each other. Let's see where this goes. So, yeah, I was very, very into this. I can't wait to just blitz through 
the chapters that are available for sure. So therein lies the question. Is this going to be joining the Shonen and Chill lineup? Yeah, for sure. There you go, people. You did it. You did it, patrons. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm going to read it. I'm going to catch up and read it weekly. And then there's no reason for me to not have it on here, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. We did it. We, we finally added. We're not just uh, adding new series and then axing them immediately. <laughs> yeah, finally, the Shonen Jump family, Shonen Chill family grows for once. Instead of just decaying Slowly over Slowly decaying down to just Jujutsu Kaisen and My Hero. <laughs> uh, uh, Shonen and Jump podcast co-host excited to start his third series in the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> really expands Horizons. Catalog grows yeah, by 33%. <laughs> But yeah, so that would sort of be my impressions from the first five chapters of Blue Box. You, are you gonna talk about that on Shonen Chill Plus, or do you want to say some things here while you're here? Uh, I'm gonna hold for the majority of it, just because one of the other rewards for this is the uh, I'll upload a Patreon exclusive audio file where I talk a little bit more about Blue Box in depth. Uh, that should go up probably tomorrow. Um, so I don't want to spill too much of it live on the air, but just for the chapters that we talked about. Um, yeah, it's a really great pilot chapter, too. I think it's one of my favorite ones, like, in terms of getting me hooked into it. Like, a lot of stories, I think, have so-so pilot chapters. I mean, like, Red Hood had a really good pilot. Um, I thought Phantom Seer had a pretty good one. But usually you don't... Or, and uh, Time Paradox Ghost Rider had a crazy good one, too. But you don't get pilots that are always super amazing. Uh, I really like the pilot for this chapter. And I really just like how the characters are sort of set up. Because, like... The, oh my god, I like this girl and now she lives with me is kind of like super tropey, right? It's almost like a, like a comical anime trope in regards to this. But it's never really played off that way. They're just like, mm -hmm. it, you know, there's nothing silly like, uh, oh, she walked in on me in the shower. Oh my god. I opened her bedroom door mm -hmm. and she's naked. It's just like they live in the same house. And it never really comes yeah. up that often. Yeah, like I, I also really like that um, in that first chapter when it happens, his main concern isn't like anything super tropey or harem-y, but it's more like every time she, I see her, I can't help but think of uh, that I want to be with her, and now I have to, it's gonna help me. Like I like that his immediate thought isn't just oh my god, yes, a chance. It's more like oh my god, how do I deal with my own? Yeah, how do I cope? Um, <laughs> yeah, how do I cope? Like even sort of the scene where you know she's going out of the bath and she's like oh hey. The bathroom's free, and he goes to ba to bathe. Which in any other series that does this, that would have been like uh, a sex gag, one hundred percent. Oh, um, yeah, a million um, percent, yes. Yeah, and he just goes in. He's like, "Damn, I really can't stop thinking about her." And then you get like the briefest flash of him imagining her in the tub, and he's like, "Fuck, I'm screwed." <laughs> and you know, it, it's it feels sincere, right? It is. It doesn't feel as gratuitous as other series that do this. So I'm, I'm yeah, I t totally agree. I I really, really like the way this is handled so far. Um, and, I mean, I don't want to get spoiled, obviously, but uh, can you tell me that it keeps up this quality? It, for like, I think, improves. Oh. 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 Damn, well, shit. Because uh, if this actually stays that way, my top three might start looking kind of funky. Yeah, because I think Not one thing lie. that I think it does, uh, you know, I don't want to talk a ton about it, but I will give a little bit that I think is good. One thing that I like about it is that, you know, he when he makes these mature realizations, the whole, like, I can't look at her through this lens kind of thing, he he does falter on that stuff sometimes. And he, he starts mm -hmm. doing it again and catching himself doing it again. Which, again, falls mm -hmm. back to, like, this is how human beings actually interact with one another, right? Like, you don't, you don't make mm -hmm. a realization and then all of a sudden everything is better, right? Like, it's something that you work on. And he has his moments where he gets, like, selfish or... He gets to thinking like, uh, well, you know, why doesn't, how do I make her, you know, like me or see that she likes me or, or he like, he falls into something later about being like, I got to treat this like it's a prize and something. And then he realizes that he's wrong and that he's not supposed to do that again. Mm -hmm. And I like that because it's, uh, that's just how people are. Like you have to keep yourself in check and he does a really good job of being mature and making sure that whenever he makes a mistake, you know, 
they grow from it and they learn from it and they they go on a date at the one point that's really a date it's like an anime date but it's very fun it's good mm-hmm. stuff they choose that I feel like okay it's well damn like it well damn in that case, I am very very excited and uh, yeah that's sort of my verdict on blue box so far if you don't have anything else then I think that's a wrap. I believe so. Uh, we'll we'll go ahead and call it today, everybody. Please read Blue Box if you haven't. Uh, it sounds like we'll be adding it into the lineup here pretty soon. So if you haven't read it, you're going to have some more airtime to skip <laughs> in uh-huh. the future. So I recommend you read it. Uh, and otherwise, we will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching Shonen and Chill. Yeah. Uh, uh, thanking the patrons. Who oh, my are God. I forgot to do that. I'm the worst Screen? at this. I'm so bad at this job. We actually have new patrons, too. We have three new ones. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Let's go. Oh, yeah, right. We have the Kingdom of Hyrule. Yeah, we have the entire Kingdom All of, of Hyrule uh, subbed, which is great. It's a lot of rupees to put toward uh, getting Red Hood back in. <laughs> <laughs> buying Red Buying Hood. Red Hood with our Zelda money. Uh, and then we have uh-huh. Mecha Moose 9000, which I like that name. And then Roman Noli, which sounds like... Uh, I. I always want to say it like a stereotypical Italian person saying cannoli. Hey, can you pass me the Roman? Yeah, exactly. Just like that. Uh, uh, Filio, (laughs) give me the Romanoli. Hey, (laughs) I can do that. I'm Italian. Perfect. Uh, And then also, everybody, make sure if you are a $10 or higher patron on this list that you please, please, please. Submit your entrance for the November Patreon reader segment. Uh, again, not everyone has done that, and I feel really bad that people are paying for the $10 tier and not giving us stuff to get your rewards with, so please do that. Um, mm-hmm. For sure. And I can't think... Oh, and just make sure, even if you uh, are not a patron, we're going to open the voting publicly this time, because last time, it ended up... Uh, Blue Box pulled away at like the last minute. Like, uh, the last minute. Uh, because we had exactly enough patrons to vote at that point. Um, but we're going to go ahead and only patrons can recommend a series still, but we're going to open the voting for the November poll publicly. So uh, please, everybody, get your suggestions in. I'll probably give about a week uh, for suggestions to come in, and then I will go ahead and post the poll, and then we'll make the poll public so that everybody can vote, and we'll see what we do uh, next time. We're not going to carry over the losers, by the way. So if you want the losers to uh, be potentially on the list, you'll need to resubmit your pick if it didn't get voted this time. All right. All right. If you got all that, then I think that's that's Halloween. All right. Oh, yeah, it's Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go enjoy some Happy time. Jujutsu Kaisen Day. Yeah, happy Jujutsu Kaisen Day, where there was no Jujutsu Kaisen. <sighs> the stars just aligned in the worst yeah, way. Yeah, it's like the star- they, they anti-aligned. It. Yeah, I'm sad. You're going to have to hold me later. All right, that's fine. Let, let's wrap the show so I can come out and then we can we can recover together. <laughs> I could make a joke about coming out, but yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting the show. I'm cutting it. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs>